It was a glorious summer day on the island of Sodor. Toby was collecting milk from the dairy. James was pulling passengers to Brendan Docks. And Thomas was taking some workmen to work. They were building a new station. Every day, Thomas had to take the workmen there and bring them home again. I can't wait for the grand opening, he told Annie and Clarabelle excitedly. There's going to be flags and a big band. On the way to the new station, there was a difficult bend in the track. Thomas didn't like it at all. He was worried about the bend, but his good friends Annie and Clarabelle were there to help him. Slow down, they sang out. Slow down and puff with care. So Thomas did slow down and he puffed with care. Thank you, Thomas puffed to Annie and Clarabelle. I couldn't have done it without you. Thomas arrived safely at the station. The fat controller was waiting for him. Today, Annie and Clarabelle are to go for their refit, he told Thomas. You must take them to the workshops straight away. But how will I take the workmen home? asked Thomas. You can use ordinary coaches instead, said the fat controller. Yes, sir, said Thomas, and he puffed away to the workshop. Thomas said goodbye to Annie and Clarabelle. He was sad. I don't know how I'll manage the difficult pen without you, he told his friends. The next day, Thomas puffed to the coach yard. He was still thinking about the difficult pen. Thomas went too fast and gave the coaches a mighty biff. The carriages rolled along the line and bumped into James. Watch what you're doing, James snorted. Sorry, Thomas puffed. Thomas was missing Annie and Clarabelle. He would never have biffed into them. Soon Thomas was on his way to pick up the workers at the new station. Difficult bend, difficult bend, he puffed nervously. The difficult bend came nearer and nearer. Thomas was supposed to slow down, but he wanted to get past the bend quickly. So Thomas went faster and faster. The carriages rattled and shook. Soon be over, soon be over, Thomas said to himself. And it soon was. Luckily, no one was hurt. But Thomas felt sadder than ever. Harvey arrived to help clear up the mess. Harvey didn't like seeing Thomas so unhappy. I can't go round the difficult bend, Thomas wished sadly. I'm not a useful engine without Annie and Clarabelle. Hmm. You are a really useful engine, said Harvey and a jolly good friend, and he puffed away. Thomas trundled slowly back to Tidmouth Sheds. He was very sad. He wanted to be back with Annie and Clarabelle. Suddenly, Thomas saw a line of troublesome trucks rushing towards him. They had come uncoupled from Edward. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas. The trucks are heading for the new station. I must warn the station master. So he raced after them. The troublesome trucks clattered along the track. Thomas was determined to save the new station, so he dashed after the runaway trucks. Thomas went faster and faster. He raced past the trucks, but he was nearly at the difficult bend.
Thomas wanted to go fast, but he knew he couldn't. Slow down, said Thomas to himself. Slow down and puff with care. Thomas applied his brakes. He slowed down and puffed very carefully. He made it round a difficult bend all by himself. I've done it, he tooted. But so did the runaway truck. Thomas puffed as fast as he could. And he raced into the station just in time. Runaway trucks are coming, he cried. You must change the points. The signalman quickly changed the points. The troublesome trucks hurtled into a siding. They biffed and bashed the buffers. But the station was safe. The next day, Thomas was back with Annie and Clarabelle. They were going to the grand opening of the new station. They chuffed along happily together. And when they came to the difficult bend, Thomas slowed down and puffed with care. The difficult bend wasn't difficult anymore. The grand opening was a great success, and the new station looked wonderful. The fat controller came to see Thomas. You have shaved my new station, he said. You are a very brave and useful engine. Thank you, sir, said Thomas. He was so proud it made his firebox glow. Winter was coming to the island of Sodor. The morning ground was covered in crisp white frost. Thomas and Emily were happily chuffing up and down the line. Thomas was enjoying pulling Annie and Clarabelle. He thought he was doing a grand job. But Emily had other ideas. She thought he could be doing an even grander job. So Emily decided to help Thomas by telling him what he was doing wrong. When she saw him puffing down the branch line, she cried out, Slow down, you are going too fast and bumping your passengers. Later, Emily saw Thomas by a bridge. He had stopped to take on water and was talking to some children. Stop talking to the children, said Emily. You are working and they will make you late. I'm never late, said Thomas huffily. There's always a first time, said Emily cheerfully. And she puffed away. Thomas was cross. He loved talking to children and thought Emily was being a big bossy buffers. Annie and Clarabelle agreed. I am never going to listen to Emily ever, ever again, said Thomas. So there. The next morning, a sleepy Thomas had to leave Tidmouth Sheds bright and early. He was to collect some trucks from the quarry and take them to the docks. Later that morning, the fat controller arrived with a new weather report. There is snow on the way. You must all have your snow ploughs fitted. Excuse me, sir, said Emily, but Thomas has already left for the quarry. Then you must find Thomas and tell him Sir Topham wants him to wear his snow plough. So Emily puffed away to get her snow plough fitted. The workmen fixed Emily's snow plough on in no time at all and she set off to find Thomas. Emily was very happy. She was looking forward to telling him what to do. Thomas was taking on water at Maithwaite Station. Emily puffed up in front of him. She blew her whistle, but Thomas didn't say hello. She just wants to boss me again, grouched Thomas. Thomas, she called. You must go and get your snowplough fitted. Thomas could hear what Emily was saying, but pretended he couldn't. He thought he was being very clever. So Emily tooted even louder again. 
You must go and get your snowplow fitted, she cried. Bother snowplows, said Thomas, and bother Emily anyway. The weather is perfectly fine. And he puffed away as fast as he could. Thomas delivered the trucks to the quarry, then set off to collect the cream from the dairy. Everything was going well. But soon the clear blue sky was eaten away by dark clouds. They look like snow clouds to me, said his driver, and he was right. Soon big flakes of white snow began to fall. Then the snow gathered into drifts and covered the tracks. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas as his wheels began to slip. Snow fell all over the island. Emily cut safely through the drifts with her snowplow. Thomas will be in trouble now. Emily was right. Thomas was working harder and harder, but he had to go more and more slowly. We can't go on, said his driver. Thomas pulled to a slow, sad stop by a signal box. And his driver went for help. It snowed and snowed. Thomas felt very cold and twice as miserable. Then he heard the sound of an engine. Thomas was delighted until he saw who his rescuer was. It was Emily. I told you to go and get your snowplow, she said. Now look what has happened. Thomas was still cross. You should say sorry for bossing me about. I am sorry, said Emily. Sorry you didn't listen to me. Emily and Thomas chuffed into Tidmouth sheds. The fat controller was waiting. He did not look happy. Emily, you must take Thomas to get his snowplow fitted at once, said the fat controller sternly. You must learn to listen. Thomas felt bad. He didn't know it was the fat controller who wanted him to wear his snowplow. Emily felt bad too. She didn't like seeing Thomas in trouble. I'm sorry, sir, said Emily. I forgot to tell Thomas it was your idea. You mean I have two engines that don't listen, boomed the fat controller. Well, I never. Emily, you must take Thomas to get his snowplow fitted at once. Soon the work was finished and Thomas was wearing his snowplow. Thank you for owning up, said Thomas. You are a very good friend. That's all right, said Emily. You're a good friend too, but next time, if you want to stay out of trouble, just do what I say. Even Thomas had to laugh. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Edward is the same color as Thomas and the same size as James. 
He can pull carriages and push trucks. And he often works as a back engine. But Edward is old and not as strong as the other engines. So sometimes Edward feels left out. The Duke and Duchess of Boxford came to visit their new summer house. They came on their own private engine called Spencer. Spencer is big and silver and very fast. When Spencer pulled into Knapford, his driver had exciting news for him. You have beaten Gordon's record, he said. Of course, boasted Spencer. I'm faster and finer than all the engines on Sodor put together. The fat controller's engines were very cross. Spencer's just a big silver show-off, sniffed Gordon, and everyone agreed. The fat controller spoke to the engines. Spencer will take the Duke and Duchess to their summer house. Another engine will take their furniture. The fat controller's engine saw the chance for a race. Please, sir, said Thomas, Percy, Gordon and James, all together. May I go? You all have other work to do, boomed the fat controller. Edward will take the furniture. James and Gordon groaned. Fancy sending a back engine to do an express engine's job, sniffed Gordon. He'll lose the race and let the old railway down, said James. Thomas and Percy were cross. Edward was their friend. Spencer has a bigger boiler, said Thomas, but that just means more hot air. An honest steamy can beat a pouty puffer any day, added Percy. Edward set off. Slow and steady. Will do my best, will do my best, he puffed. Spencer set off and quickly passed Edward. I've won already, he boasted. And with a whoosh, he was gone. Edward came to the bottom of a steep hill. The freight was heavy and he felt very tired. He huffed and he puffed and was soon at the top. He could see Spencer in the distance and set chase at once. Edward raced down the hill. Spencer stopped at Wellsworth Station. The Duke and Duchess wanted to buy some tea and cakes from the refreshment lady. Edward teetered into view. Hurry up, old boy, laughed Spencer. Can't have you finishing too far behind me. Edward wished he could have a rest too. But the station master and the porters had heard about the race. Hooray for Edward, they cheered. Edward picked up steam and proudly puffed past Spencer. But then the Duke and Duchess finished their tea and Spencer was off in a flash. He roared past Edward. Fastest and best, fastest and best, he chirped. Edward was nearly out of puff. The furniture felt heavier than ever. Up ahead, Spencer had to stop. The Duke wanted to take some photographs of the countryside. The Duke set up his camera. Spencer closed his eyes. Nothing to worry about, he said lazily. Gordon was returning to Brendam Docks. He passed Spencer and knew Edward must be losing the race. Edward is a waste of steam, he sniffed. 
But when Gordon passed Edward and saw how hard he was trying, he felt bad about what he had said. Well done, Edward, he called. You are a credit to the railway. Edward was so happy his boiler tingled. He found Puff he never knew he had. The Duke and Duchess had finished taking photographs and were back on board. Time to go, said his driver and rang the bell. But nothing happened. Spencer was dreaming of victory. He didn't hear the bell. And he didn't hear Edward puffing past him. Spencer's driver rang the bell again. When Spencer finally opened his eyes, he could see Edward heading towards the summer house. Nearly there, nearly there, he gasped. Spencer took off as fast as he could. But as he reached the siding, his driver ordered him to slow down. These are old tracks and you are a very heavy engine, he said. You must go slowly. Spencer had no choice. He had to slow down. And he trundled slowly down the siding. With every click and every clack, he knew that he had lost the race. Edward puffed towards the summer house. I've won, he gasped. I did it. Edward felt like a really useful engine. Hooray, I've won, he cheered loudly. Edward felt like the pride of the Sodor Railway. And he was right. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Percy is a little green engine who can shunt and pull. He pulls both passengers and freight. At the docks and at the quarry. Percy's favourite job is carrying the mail. But sometimes Percy has so much to do, he ends up running late. That evening, Percy arrived late at Brendam Docks. You're late again, Percy, said the dock manager. I will have to speak to the fat controller. Percy was upset. Percy returned to Tidmouth Sheds. The other engines were already asleep. Then Percy heard voices on the other side of the sheds. It was the fat controller, and he was talking to Percy's driver. Percy tried not to listen, but he couldn't help himself. Percy has been late too often this week, said the fat controller. He must go to the scrapyards tomorrow. The fat controller wants to scrap me, gasped Percy. Percy worried all night long. The next morning, the sun shone and the birds sang, but Percy was too upset to notice. The fat controller wants to scrap me, he cried, and all because I was late. The fat controller wouldn't scrap a really useful engine, said Thomas, and you, Percy, are a really useful engine. Percy felt better until he noticed the time. I'm going to be late, he cried. Percy wished away. 
If he was on time, maybe the Fat Controller wouldn't send him to the scrapyard. Percy's first job was collecting pipes from Brendam Docks. But when he arrived, Cranky was still unloading. Hurry up, slow coach, wished Percy. I must be on time. I'll take as long as I like, said Cranky, and he went slower than ever. The moment Cranky had finished, Percy took off. He hadn't waited for the pipes to be tied down. Percy rounded the bend. The pipe slipped and fell all over the track. But Percy puffed on. Percy thought he'd delivered the pipes, so he chuffed away to his next job. Percy was to take some tar wagons to the workmen mending the roads. Be careful, said his driver. Tar is sticky stuff. But Percy wasn't being careful. He was going too fast. Percy charged down Gordon's Hill. He didn't see Gordon and the Express until it was too late. The brake van passed Gordon. But the tar wagons didn't. Luckily, no one was hurt, but Gordon was very cross. Now look what you've done, he wished. What will the fat controller say? Percy thought he knew. Oh no, he cried. I'm sure to be scrapped now. And so Percy decided to run away. Harvey was clearing away the tar wagons when the Fat Controller arrived aboard Thomas. Where is Percy? He said. He has caused confusion and delay. Gordon didn't know. He just left very quickly, sir. He heard you at the shed, sir, said Thomas. He thought you were sending him to be scrapped. I think I need a word with Percy, said the Fat Controller. You must all help me find him. And so everyone looked for Percy. They searched high and they searched low. They looked to and fro, but they couldn't see Percy anywhere. What's to become of me? Percy whispered. But there was no one around to hear. Percy looked very small and felt very lonely. Thomas and the Fat Controller were looking for Percy on Thomas's branch line. Thomas suddenly had an idea. I think I know where Percy is, sir. And he puffed back to Tidmouth's sheds as fast as he could. The sheds were very quiet as Thomas rolled into the engine berth. Percy, called the Fat Controller, are you there? Please don't scrap me, sir, he said. I didn't mean to be late to cause trouble. Scrap you, boomed the Fat Controller. Why, the very thought of it. And the Fat Controller told Percy what he had really said. I told your driver that you had been working too hard, and that was why you were late. I had decided, after taking some scrap to the smelters, that you were to carry the mail all week. Percy was as happy as he had ever been. Do you really mean it, sir? Puffed Percy proudly. The mail for a whole week. Thank you, sir. Percy couldn't stop himself tooting for joy. Thomas tooted too. It was good to have his friend back. So Percy carried the mail all week. He wasn't late and he didn't make a mistake. Not one. And Percy decided never to listen to silly stories ever again. Especially not ones made up by himself.